Alright guys, welcome back. We're going to be talking about Arrhenius' rule for acids and bases. So again, these are the different topics that you guys need to be following along with. And today we'll be asking that one vital question. Who is Arrhenius? Then after we figure that out, we'll be talking about Arrhenius acids, Arrhenius bases, and the different rules that apply for identifying these acids. I'm really liking your backgrounds on these. Thanks. Right. You know, I was, you know, feeling pretty, uh, bad, you know. You know, it might be breaking bad or something. Mmm, yeah. Svante Arrhenius. It's a very <laughs> Swedish name, don't I you know. think? So, his theory states that acids ionize in water to yield electrically charged hydrogen ions, or sometimes what we call protons, and that bases ionize in water to yield the hydroxide ions. Yay! So one thing you guys can never forget is acids make hydrogen ions, bases make hydroxide ions. If you can't take anything else away from these videos, this is the one thing you should take away from the videos. Deal with it. So Savante's idea is that it is now known that the hydrogen ion cannot exist in water alone. Think about it. What do hydrogens love to do? They love to bond. Hydrogen bonds. So if you have a hydrogen ion in water, it's going to combine with that water molecule and form what we call a hydronium ion, which is H3O with a positive charge. So in practice, we will say hydronium ions but it's still customary to see it in quizzes, tests, labs, and other regions to be referred to just as a simple hydrogen ion. Or proton. Sometime, or proton. Sometimes they do call it a proton. Mm -hmm. So let's think about all that. If you notice in the top left, we have our simple covalent drawing for a water molecule. It's shaped that way because it's bent. If water was to self-ionize, which means to self-split apart, you would get a hydroxide ion, which we see to the left, and we also get a hydrogen ion, which we see to the right. That H plus ion is going to want to bind up to something, so why not bind up to another water molecule? Hydrogen with a plus one charge means it's just a proton, but it's got no electrons. It needs somebody or something, so it's going to bind up to your water molecule and thus make hydronium. It makes a coordinate covalent bond, and I don't know if you guys remember that one, uh, but those two electrons, that hydrogen ion, shares with the water molecules not really coming from both sides it's only coming from the one also acids are hydrogen ions bases are hydroxide ions water is neutral so you can see that why it's neutral because it has one of each it's a 50 50 split if you can't also visualize with the symbols that we have you can use this picture that i just put up so you're noticing hydrogen plus water thus making the h3o hydronium ion and for everyone that's a little confused on hydrogen ions and protons, here's your hydrogen atom. If a hydrogen atom loses an electron, it's just a proton. Nothing else to it, guys. Hydrogen atoms can be just called protons. So again, acids are hydrogen-containing compounds that ionize and yield that proton. Bases are hydroxide ions containing compounds that ionize to yield the hydroxide ions in aqueous conditions. Oh boy. This seems pretty simple. So if you have HCl and it breaks apart, you're going to notice you have that H plus ion, that's an acid. And if you have calcium hydroxide, which is incorrectly done on here, I will give one point to anyone that comes up to me specifically and tells me what's wrong with it. You'll notice that you have that OH ion. So we've done this before. Uh, if you were to take sulfuric acid or any type of acid and mix it with a metal like zinc, you would notice that you're going to get bubbles being formed. Now those bubbles being formed, if you were to take a delivery tube through a soapy solution, you can make these bubbles. And the gas on the inside, mysterious gases, you could actually take a candle or any type of flame and you could pop them. And that popping sound is the actual combustion of hydrogen gases, which is pretty cool. So Technically, using this picture and a little bit of your brains, you can make your own hydrogen gas. So acids that contain one ionizable hydrogen are called monoprotic acids. So like nitric acid, when it uh, dissociates, you're going to get the one hydrogen ion and one nitrate ion. Acids that can dissociate 
two ionizable hydrogens are called diprotic, so like sulfuric acid. And then acids that contain three ionizable hydrogens are called triprotic, which are like phosphoric acid. The same rule applies though with bases. So instead of calling them protic, we call them monohydroxy. So for example, sodium hydroxide is a monohydroxy base because it only makes one hydroxide. Same thing if you have two ionizable hydroxide ions. We call those things a dihydroxy base, sort of like barium hydroxide. The reason why there's two? Well, barium's got a plus two charge. Oxide's only got one. So you have to make sure the charges equal out. That's why you need two hydroxides. And finally, if you have three ionizable hydroxides, you are what we call a trihydroxy. Blah. So some basic examples of our heinous acids. <laughs> I see what you did there. What? You said basic <laughs> examples. Basic examples. That's, that's bad. Yeah. That's like a 12. And some basic examples of bases. Get it? Basic examples. <laughs> are sodium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, and aluminum hydroxide. So Arrhenius acids, bases, and soluble salts are called electrolytes. When each dissolves, electricity conducting ions are released. I have a question. I have an answer. Are sugars or any covalent compounds called electrolytes? No. What do we call them? Not electrolytes. That's a thing? Yeah. Oh man, did I watch video one? I don't think so. Should I watch it? Yes. Okay, thank you. Alright guys, so from today's lesson we should have figured out who is this strange man and his strange name, Savant Arrhenius. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because he would have said Mr. Shonen. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, we also talked about Arrhenius' rules about acids and bases. We kind of explained why metals and acids will make hydrogen gases. That's table J if you've forgotten. And we've given you guys some examples of Arrhenius' acids and bases. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little lesson. Have a great night. Bye-bye.